Okay, here we go, approaching the end of this burn. And hopefully this will bring us right at Mars. Okay, we'll have to use RCS to fine-tune it, I'm sure. Okay, well, crash course, that's a good start, really. Okay, well, I can't uh, fine-tune more than that. 350 kilometers. That was with RCS, so... If an RCS burst can't mess with it any better than that, that's how it's gonna be. Okay, I just sent the signal to turn RCS off, and it's gonna take forever to get there. Oh, I actually wanted to reorient the craft so that's facing the sun a little bit better, so I'm gonna want RCS on. Well, while it is on, and since I can use thrust regardless of the signal delay, um, let's see, orientation, where's the sun? Well, I guess I'll have to do. Should have five times what we need for the transit. I hope it's not going to dim too much more. Oh dear. Uh, okay, the wiggling is causing... Uh, I Once RCS turns off, it'll be fine, but... Anyway. Uh, okay, well now we have a Duna Preapsis of 99. Okay. Uh, now... We're crashing again. <laughs> uh, hold on. Okay, 156. Sounds fine. Okay, it's looking excellent. In fact, it's looking like we have enough to power everything regardless of the power down of the smaller probes. So the drain is normally 0.45 when I'm not time warping. I think we'll have enough electric charge for that. Okay, here we are. Now, I don't know what altitude we should aerobrake at Mars with. So, gonna point at the radial vector. Gonna bring it in a tad. Now, uh, I mentioned that I've been doing some tests with the Mars ascent vehicle and uh, air braking at Mars with that. And what I know is that 50 kilometers still brings you down to the ground directly. Not a problem for the Mars ascent vehicle, but. I mean, assuming you don't want to have it land at a particular location, but quite a problem for for this since our orbiter has to remain in orbit. So, I'm going to, uh, it's a rare case where I'm going to quick save, and I'm gonna say, let's try 55 first. I feel like 55 will do the trick. If it'll let me... Okay, fine. 54.3. 54.3. Or 5. Yeah. That. Or 6. I think I'll just go with this number. 52.8, we'll call it. Uh, maybe higher will be safer. Let me go with my original plan. Especially since every instance of time warping seems to change the number on us. 54.5. Okay. Oh, there's Mars. We gotta have SAS off before turning to retrograde. So yeah, electric charge, good in this case. We've done a good job there. Not bad, not a amazingly severe inclination, some inclination, 36 degrees backwards. Okay, solar panels in. I think that was the, yes? Oh, that, that, silly. That, of course, will have the delay. And uh, the front... This antenna should also come in. I'll press that once this time. Okay, well, I'm gonna time warp and then they're gonna happen in 10 minutes. Okay, it goes in, it'll come back out, and it'll come back in again. There we go. And then back in, please. 
Very good. And this goes down. Okay, we're all set. Let's do some science. Observe mystery goo. Should have done one high. Oh, oh, no connection. Okay, well, um, well, this is bad planning on my part. Should have known I wasn't going to have any connection at this point. Lull into a false sense of security because I had connection for a while. Hopefully the atmosphere will push us in the right direction, retrograde. Because we're certainly not facing it right now. Oh no, it's flipping around the other way. Uh, the the lander is. Oh, I guess I guess this thing has its center mass and center lift in a bad way. I didn't check uh, it with this stage. Okay, okay. Um, well, our, our lander is vulnerable now. Not so much to heating, but for aerodynamic stress it will be, even though uh, there's not much of an atmosphere here. It's, it seems to be enough. Anyway, that's not got to tell us anything. Let's see, what's likely to be the hottest part? Right now, the temperatures are not bad. Yeah, I mean, temperature-wise, it's not going to have a problem. I guess it's because this portion is mostly empty of fuel right now. If this is full of fuel, then of course this end would be much heavier than that. But that's got fuel. Okay, still going down, hoping that we get captured here. Again, not very worried about the temperatures. And we can see that it's still fairly cool, and this is very high in, in the atmosphere of Mars. It's actually somewhat surprising we get so much drag here. The atmosphere of Mars in uh, 0 0.90 in this version of real, uh, real solar system seems to start at 130 kilometers, just like uh, Earth's does. It just has less density. Okay, well we're in orbit. We're in orbit, so now it's a question of are we so low that we're going to end up crashing? Communication is not going to be restored for, well, uh, let's see, it looks like it'll be restored here. Yeah, so ending up uh, facing the wrong way wasn't a big deal for this portion, but again with the lander we need to be facing the opposite direction because otherwise the thruster will not be able to slow us down on descent. Out, well, Unless the parachutes sort of swing us around violently. Okay, it's not looking bad. I think we can call this a successful aero break. Come on, oh atmosphere of Mars, get thinner, please. Okay, yeah, it looks good. This is our orbit, and that's quite satisfactory. Now, of course, even though we can see everything here and it's oddly bright, that's actually because of ambient light adjustment, mostly. Let's turn that down a bit. Well, actually, it should be bright. Well, it shouldn't be that bright. Something decided to happen? Ah, goo observation. Uh, well, we'll have to keep that data for... Oh, darn. Now I can't access it. I should have kept the window open until we got closer. I mean, I got a uh, connection. Oh, oh, we can... Re oh, no, we can't. Oh, well, we... Okay, I'm confused. I think in stock I can't review data. Well, maybe I can. I forget. Okay, so we'll be able to review data and transmit. Okay, we've got connection now. Um... Uh, no, uh... Okay, fine. Point retrograde, it's fine. Doesn't matter if we have fuel. Most importantly, we need data.
Okay, and that'll take 10 minutes. Okay, and then that'll take 10 minutes. And then that'll take 10 minutes. And that'll take 10 minutes. Any other experiments we can do? Probe situation report. Uh, let's go for this probe. Okay, so we've got a bunch of science available to us in 10 minutes. Doesn't say we've achieved orbit around around this planet, but uh, we'll boost up our periapsis at apoapsis and I'll be fine. Maybe I shouldn't... Uh, yeah, well, let's just get it all stable there and then it'll be fine. We'll do a separate retro burn with the probe. Okay, so mystery go observation. Transmit. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't have a delay. Okay, uh, x-ray detection. Transmit. Pressure scan can't be done right now because this isn't 1.0. Okay, uh, temperature scan from space above Olympus Mons. Were we above Olympus Mons? Okay, transmit. Did we get everything? Hopefully. Okay, so that is hopefully everything. And we've got that part of the contract fulfilled. Now let's achieve orbit. And now I'll also extend these commutrons here. After, of course, the delay. Okay, hopefully that'll give us our relay for this little probe. That's the tough part. Making sure that this is overhead when that probe is down. Okay, that should be it. Carbol joint reinforcement turning to prograde here. And let's lift it up. We want it relatively close to the probe as the probe lands, so I'm going to have it at 150. There we go. So uh, we go for set, making sure we are controlling from here. I'll leave the mystery goo for now. All right, set. And that'll take 10, 10 minutes. Yes, okay. Don't hurt them. Yeah, don't hurt that. Uh, RC oh, I shouldn't have turned RCS off. Uh, what I want to do is uh, unlock stuff. And that electric charge as well. We'll need to sidestep the the orbiter because we have to go retrograde. Don't overdo things, little probe. I think it's overdoing things. Crud. Stop that. At least I can stop that ahead of time. Okay. Uh, Gonna activate this like this. There we go. All right. So briefly, let's go back to retrograde. Okay, that's sufficiently gentle on the reducing periapsis. And I'm going to bring that to 50. All right, that should do the trick. Okay, I'm going to arm the parachutes. Oh, I don't have connect crud. Already? Should be close enough to relay through our orbiter. Our orbiter does have these these antenna these kinds as well. It's only twenty one kilometers away. These have a thousand kilometer range. Make sure it has connection. Okay, so this has connection. This has a bunch of antennae out, including these Reflectron DP-10s. It's only 20 kilometers away. And it has connection and has power and everything. This, on the other hand, does not seem to be able to... Oh, now it can talk. Okay, well, while you can talk to it, let me arm your parachutes. And hopefully that will happen. Oh, it's, it's got the glitch. 
It's got this probe core being big. That's not good. But all right, let's let's call that even as long as we can. And let me have you hold retrograde resolutely. Ah, but I can't slow down while landing. Ah, uh, I forgot about that. We're coming down on the side opposite opposite our communication. Shall we boost up and Yeah, I guess we have to boost up and get this landing on the side that we have communication. Should have probably done this a little bit differently, but Oh uh how are you even gonna bring this over down? Well retrograde. Okay, and now we have to wait until we get connection. Well, we're definitely coming down somewhere. This is probably not a good idea. Oh, shoot. We will be coming down too sharply. Let's see if we can survive just on the parachutes, I guess. Or we can time a thrust. I wonder if that's even possible. I mean, not possible. I mean, that's possible, but I wonder if it would work. No, but I don't know how much we'll need. Okay, well, yeah, I'm just going to have it uh, come down on the parachutes. Don't know if I'll... Well... I don't know how to tell it to extend lander legs. I need to look up the documentation for this flight computer for that sort of thing. If I extend ladder legs now, I'm sure FAR will rip them off. I'm gonna tell it to... Well, we've done it here. Oh, I should have action grouped these. Then I could use flight computer to manage them. Well, so some flaws in all of this, but I think we got pretty far into it. And we've got part of our contract fulfilled. But need to do better orbital management with the orbiter. The orbiter will have to get into orbit and then sort of drop the orbit a little bit so that we can actually land on the side facing Earth and then it'll work out a little bit better oh wait no uh, no I forgot about that um, actually if we had put the orbiter in a slightly higher orbit it, it maintain communication all the way down won't it yeah that would have been enough if it was higher it might still do it might still be blocked depends how quickly we come down we're in the Martian atmosphere. I guess I might as well log X-ray data in 10 minutes. Log pressure data in 10 minutes. I don't know if this probe is going to survive another 10 minutes. And I think we, we were ahead of it. That's good, because we're going to be slowing down. That's a good situation. Okay, we are definitely going to be heading for the surface this time parachutes are set to deploy very high we'll see how that works out if they're not the uh, drogue chutes that I was expecting it could be a problem at least this thing isn't flipping around so that worked out this does have three days worth of battery life so if it survives in any fashion and can communicate. We can do stuff with it. Uh oh, what's overheating? Oh, whatever. Nothing has actually overheated. We're slowing down pretty nicely. G forces are mild. Parachutes are set to deploy at 20 kilometers, I believe. Ah, well, I can't even see the info when uh, when we don't have communication. That's that's impressive. 
So we really don't need to set another orbiter necessarily. We can just boost our current orbiter to a higher orbit and that would suffice. I mean, of course we can bring another orbiter to get better coverage. Okay, uh, we've got parachute deployment. G-forces are high, well that's expected, but not very high. Not high enough to rip the thing apart is the, is the point. Okay, very good. That is not at altitude above the surface, clearly. I'm constantly watching to see if we get a uh, connection. But yeah, so we we certainly have done something very useful in this mission, uh, setting an orbiter in orbit that can communicate back to Earth. And we'll see some further details about how to approach Mars in a moment as these fully deploy. This is pretty good. The parachute deployment worked out very well. We're now at a speed where uh, if I could use the engine we could help this thing survive. Okay, full deployment of parachute pending. And now G-forces fairly high but sustainable. Okay, simulation is having issues but we're, we're pretty slow. I mean these are huge parachutes for such a small object. 14.5 meters. I don't know. It could survive. With the landing gear down it would have a better chance but yeah we don't even have to carry this much fuel. probably good to do so anyway. Remember uh, this fuel is also used to uh, make orbital changes so that's important. Oh, uh, x-ray detection while flying over Dunas. Okay, we've, we've got some data being done here. Um, I don't know if we can transmit this stuff now. We should better, we should hang on to it. Let me just leave that window be. Uh, oh, well, can we? No, we can't. It's not no comms devices. We have comms devices. Huh, anyway. Okay, 13.3 meters per second. How hard will this be? Ooh. Oh. Oh, engine's off. Landing struts, I think, are actually intact. Our instrumentation... I think actually our thermometer fell off. No, our thermometer's there. Okay. So, let's see if we can get into communication after a little while. Uh-oh. Oh, does it go into low power mode? Is that what just... Yeah, okay, it went, they went into low power mode automatically. Oh, that's cool. Oh, communication. Oh, no. What was that about? Come on. Okay. Communication, and it's steady. Let's see. Um, review x-ray data. It's going to take 10 minutes. Review data. Hopefully, within that 10 minutes, we'll still have communication. It's tough because in this location, the satellite is passing by very close to the surface. So we're going to lose communication very quickly. But while we've got it, uh, I want one of the other probes to do a probe situation report. This, this is landed, right? Yes, we've landed. Quote unquote. Okay, well, I guess I just have to time warp until we can do things. We've lost communication, but I can. Am I going to be able to tell it to transmit the next time around? Come on. I don't dare time warp more than this, otherwise, we'll like pass by 10 minutes too quickly. Transmit. Excellent. Oh, it has to wiggle in order to transmit. That's interesting. Transmit. Done. Transmit. 
done transmit and those were uh, flying over so we've still got log pressure data temperature is somewhere there buried in there and Geiger counter okay and that'll be another 10 minutes but we've fulfilled our contract we have done it mission successful sort of not bad okay we can transmit immediately uh, yeah yeah uh, let me just cancel that from Olympus Mons we have done the science yep and we did the probe situation report okay so we have completed our science we should have gotten much much science uh, 817 altogether right now and mission successful so the Angua 2 or uh, it was no it was Angua dash M for Mars in this case has been successful with with a few with a few issues but uh, recoverable issues so yes very good still twitching and uh, with that I'll say thank you for watching if you enjoyed this episode please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time